Was Mrs. Delight a cannibal? Was Ollie actually a bad guy? The latest chapter of Poppy Playtime is full of secret tapes and hidden lore. Here is everything you missed in chapter three. Secret tape number one. Okay, we all know Poppy Playtime is very scary. And like any respectable scary game, you gotta have the scary VHS tapes. So let's start with those. So there are 12 tapes in total, but three of them are actually very essential to the story, so they're not as hard to find. The first secret tape is literally so easy to find that it's right in front of you at the beginning of the chapter, in front of the TV. All right, Miss huh. Harper, please explain the situation. Tell well, us everything. All the children are Catnap had the red smoke in the room. Then suddenly, there was this scream. <sighs> Not scream. what happened, I know, but this. It's the gas, the, way the red I smoke. The way around the room, and I swear, her hand in mine, it felt like her blood was this is boiling beneath her skin. Miss Harper, we'll provide the very best care we can offer. You cannot trust you that have my voice, word. whoever that is. But this is important. Did Marie happen to describe what she saw? Catnap. I wanted to talk to her. See how she's doing. I just, but she's I not really going to be able to. Right now. That would not be advised. She's not allowed to talk to her child. Uh uh. She'll be okay. No. Well, pardon me if I'm not comforted by that. That is a bit of an extreme <laughs> scream. It's <laughs> Okay, so like, here's the thing. What is that actually about? It's not revealed in the game. It's actually revealed on someone's computer by going to playtimeco.org. Now, this was advertised in the second trailer for Poppy Playtime, chapter three. And on this website, they were posting lore and secret things about the game before it came out. But now, as you can see, we're locked out. We can't see nothing, but don't worry, Google has everything we need to see. So this is the piece of lore we were looking for and y'all, it is hard to see. So I'm putting on my glasses so I can actually read this. So as you can see, this refers to Mrs. Claire Harper, which that's the name on the tape that we've just played. And she was apparently a counselor. Incident details, Marie, a child within my care, began violently screaming just after lights out. Incident causes, I have noticed a group of boys who picked on her, teasing her around during their playtime. It could be them causing this. She's being bullied, this poor girl. Whatever its causes, ensure this never happens to my little girl again. All right, um, Mrs. Claire Harper is not happy, which I can definitely understand because Marie is definitely having bad dreams and people People are bullying her. Bullying is not okay. But here's the deal. It gets even crazier than you think. Because do you remember who Marie Payne is? She turns into mommy long legs. <sighs> I know, mind blown right now. And we can definitely assume that catnap is who caused this. She definitely had a visit from catnap and then started screaming. So the next two secret tapes are the grab pack instructions and the nightmare tape later on in the episode that you literally are forced to watch. So the next real secret tape is the fourth one, which can be found in Home Sweet Home. Subject is stable. Designated 1322. We've pulled him from the Home Sweet Home just before lights out to perform. What are you doing with my friend? Oh. I, what are you doing out of bed? How did you get in here? Yes. Kevin is very sick. Check on Kevin. Very, very sick. Well, do you really think you'll be okay? This poor yeah, little kid know. sounds like a good friend. We do, son. Come now. Let's get you on back to bed. <sighs> See. Oh, okay. It's been a pleasure meeting you, Joseph. Joseph. And I promise you. Your friend will be all right. So we have a name. Joseph and Kevin. Dad, he'll have never been better. I feel like this one's like extra creepy for some reason. I feel like the adults in this game are mega sus. Like when people ask any questions about what's going on in the playtime code, they're like, oh, it's fine. Stop asking questions. You know, like can't trust anyone in this game. So it seems like Kevin might be one of the orphans from the play care who turned into one of the bigger bodies. And his friend Joseph is just, he's worried about him. He wants to know what happened to him. There's also a secret room in the orphanage that contains secrets about Kissy Missy. This actually terrified me when I found it, I won't lie, because it's, ah! she's right there. But I did find it interesting. She was looking at a picture of this little sad girl. What if that was her before? I don't know. That could have been her before. That could have been, you know, her best friend. That could have been her mom. I don't know. Who do you think it is? Put it in the comments. 
Okay, now we're at secret tape number five. Now, the next secret tape is in that same area in a glass cabinet. And when you take it over to the TV, you will hear this recording. This one's really creepy to me. Well, of course, they'd never miss this. This week, Dr. White here has selected our very own Samuel, Samuel Lee. Lee. Oh yeah, okay, so I'm really, this is all coming back to me when I played this game. I almost feel like Samuel Lee was sacrificed to become a monster. And it's like they're all cheering and excited for him and telling him bye at the same time. One, two, three. Isn't that creepy? Like, you've been chosen. Who are you, Sam? It, it just gets a little confusing watching some of these tapes because we really don't know who these people are. And there's no notes or videos talking about a Samuel Lee or a Dr. White. At first, I thought it was Mommy Longlegs talking because they have like similar voices, but the closed caption says Miss Brooks. Who are you, Miss Brooks? Could that be one of Miss Delight's sisters? I know she did talk about her sisters a lot when she was going crazy. And they're all saying bye to someone named Samuel Lee, which reminds me of something Mommy Longlegs said in chapter two. Call me Mommy because I was the closest thing they ever had to one. She was the mommy. They left. Mommy. Like Samuel Lee. He had to leave and he never came back. Wait, what if Mommy Longlegs is the sister of Miss Delight? You worked here. So if anyone deserves to die, no. Not me. No, that's incorrect. I don't deserve to die. But I'm thinking maybe this VHS tape is referring to one of the times that that happened. Sometimes the children would leave and never come back. Well, Samuel Lee, I don't think he ever came back. All right, secret tape number six. So the next tape can be found in the schoolhouse and is almost as scary as Mrs. Delight herself. Please, where are the children? Are they? They, I hope they escaped. Same place as the employees? What? No. I forgot that creepy safe? voice. Yes. Probably because he knew I'd kill them all. <laughs> yeah, that was, I think, one of the scariest tapes from the entire game. She was definitely one of the creepiest characters in the game I've ever had to fight. And sometimes she wouldn't even stay dead. Check this out. This is some behind the scenes footage. Preston was trying to show me how to beat this boss. Okay, this is some behind the scenes truth. But look at that, she's gone. Did I glitch her? She just disappeared. Uh, uh, oh, what? Oh my gosh, it's her dead body. What? Wait, this is closed. What? What? That is crazy. I want to try it again though, because that only took a couple of minutes. So if I can get away with it. What? See, we hadn't even started the game and she just killed us. Bro, we broke the game. So me and Delight are, are not friends, as you could tell. I know this seems like a glitch, but in the hour of joy footage, were there actually multiple copies of her? Did I get attacked by one of her clones? I hope so. That will make me feel better because she killed me so many times. I will feel less embarrassed if, you know, I, I had more enemies fighting against me than just the one. But to really understand what is going on, we're going to have to look at all of the notes in the school. Around the school, there are a bunch of letters. Note one, just a few weeks ago now was the hour of joy. Today, there's only silence in this school. I don't think any of us here know what to do with it. The hallways without the children carry even the smallest sounds as if they were shouts. The other teachers and I startle each other constantly. We'll have to get used to it. Something locked the front door this morning. We haven't been able to open it. Sorry, that part just freaked me out. So that was note number one. And then we got another. Note number two. I heard a knock at the door today. I heard it breathing. Whatever it was, it wouldn't speak when called out to. I spent hours after it went silent wondering if this was what locked us in here. I've made a weapon of sorts, pencils and rulers and tape and twine. I've taken to calling it Barb. It's crude, but if that door opens, I need to be ready. Then we head on over to note number three. No food for days. The others argued with me about what was left. They started glaring, judging. They blocked the kitchen doorway with their bodies. I think they've singled me out to die first. That's pretty intense. Is this from Miss Delight? I think it is, right? It is her school, and she seemed to be the one who died in it. The pit in me howls for food. I can't think about anything other than how hungry I am. 
hardly have the strength now to pick myself off the floor. Barb speaks to me though. She gives me strength. I've found that if I stand still completely still, everyone thinks I'm dead. Barb says I need to eat and that the other teachers would never see me coming. Anything to stop the howling. So I believe this is delight. And she slowly went crazy. She was like gonna kill Barb and attack Barb. And then all, all of a sudden, Barb talks to her and they're friends. Like I'm getting mixed signals. Do we like Barb or not? I think Barb's bad. Okay, last we have note number five. I'm so sorry I had to eat. I had to survive, I ate them. I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to! It's in caps, I'm sorry. Like I, I had to, I mean, I had to yell just a little bit, so. These notes show why Catnap had to lock Mrs. Delight in the school. The VHS tape is actually a conversation between Mrs. Delight and Catnap after they opened the school back up. Right, secret tape number seven. The seventh VHS tape is a bright red one that is just in the middle of the walkway when you're walking across the underground high rise. Lucky elevator. Oh yeah, the frustrated employee. I take it you're not a fan of this place, are you? Nope, never liked the feel of it. Richie has a good I mean, gut intuition. These kids deserve some real sunlight. <laughs> her? Uh, you're just Who's her? Different, Rich. Honest to a fault. You know, Richie, with my retirement coming up, they've been pushing hard for me to choose my replacement. And it's going to be you, Richie. I'm thinking about giving the role to you. That's very kind. <laughs> really? I think. There's I mean, guy Richie's pretty rude, but Stu and believes in him. Be you guys, working man. but don't be rude. You prove me right. I said your chances are pretty good. Just glad to see not everyone in this place has it out for me. Oh, poor Richie. He feels like not he's being bullied. Not everybody, bullied. Rich. Not everybody. But most people, Rich. Rich is back. So we've actually heard about Rich in the other chapters of Poppy Playtime. So he's obviously an employee. He complains a lot about the work environment and all that jazz, but it is in chapter two. It says that he was demoted to the rejected room as a result of his complaints, which that's real rough. Let's let's listen to the demotion, poor guy. Well, it finally happened. The company actually heard all my complaints because the next day I got demoted down here. Uh-oh. To the freaking island of misfit toys! Ah! They don't want you to speak your mind in Playtime Co. So it's interesting, because in chapter two, he got demoted, but then in chapter three, it makes it sound like something good's happening for him, potentially with the stew guy. I don't know. Like, it seems like he's being offered a new job. Is this before or after the tape was made for chapter two? I don't I don't know. Catnap has a shrine. There's a very creepy moment you might miss, because I know I originally did. See, like, I was focused on not dying at this point, okay? But look at this! Ew! So my question is, is this the catnap? Like, is oh no, it's a stuffed catnap. And it's looking at a bunch of not good looking toys. What is it worshiping? What does this mean? How did I miss that? So it literally looks like catnap is worshiping some sort of weirdly made shrine. But don't worry, to understand this better, we can watch another tape. This is secret tape number eight, which can be found in the playhouse. This is catnap. <gasps> Uh, experiment number 1188. What's his real name again? <clears throat> hey, Theo. How you doing, bud? Normally, I'd have Dr. Sawyer do this, but he's, uh, out, let's say. What happened to Dr. Sawyer? So you got Sawyer? me until they find his replacement. His First replacement? First off, congrats. This is officially your fourth year in your new body. I was told that when you and the other smiling critters, you know, dog day, picky piggy, yada 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 Keep were added into play care that you weren't really getting along too well with the kids like everybody else was is his uh so does he just not talk still broken? that was Theo, terrifying nobody's gonna save you this prison is where you belong Poor Theo. we'll let you out here and there to go see the kids in play care but your home is here and as for the prototype his like home him. is in the labs this is your life now. 
get used to it. That man's not very nice. So like, I know maybe you're confused why, why I'm saying poor catnap, but that was a little kid that got turned into this monster. So like, I still feel slightly bad for him, right? So the voice we hear in that recording is Lyoth Peary. Guys, I don't know how to say it. He is the head of innovation and he's appeared in all the chapters. Laya Pieri is mentioned in nearly every tape regarding Playtime Co. and signs an important document in Restricted Disappearance. It's reasonable to assume that his role as head of innovation is equivalent to the title of COO, which is a big title. Can be assumed that he is the true CEO of Playtime Co. because Ludwig was gone. Okay, so we're thinking this man is the actual CEO of the entire Playtime factory. I mean, he was talking directly to Experiment 1188 being catnapped. He called him Theo because his real name is Theodore Gramble, which that information was given to us on that website that I showed y'all before, the playtimecompany.org website, but it's a really long story, so I'm gonna let my friend Matt Pat explain. The one child that keeps coming up in multiple reports Theodore. is Theodore Gramble, who apparently was caught sneaking around the playcare looking for files that a quote-unquote friend told him to find. Please, Pierre. Naturally, the counselor's suspicious of this, as the requests for files seem way too specific to be made yeah, by just a seven-year-old. Huh, a mysterious figure hiding in the shadows that kids don't know exist and is looking for files about the inner workings Creepy. of play care? Sounds to me like Theodore is getting a visit from 1006. And that's exactly what's happening. So we got another load of images from the oh. ARG. And one of them is a drawing of Theodore sitting on his bed Theo with a seven. black arm reaching out that's from under. That's the prototype. The prototype is used in Theodore to try and stop the entire operation. To oh. free the kids. According to a way. transcript, he tried to escape. But something malfunctioned and he got electrocuted. <gasps> stopping his heart uh -oh. and badly burning him. Fortunately and unfortunately, there's a way to save him. At the what? same time all this was going on, Playtime was developing Which experiment 1188, specifically the purple cat catnap. This experiment would have massive claws, be able to change its size, and be fitted with, quote, oh, yeah, gas delivery apparatus its size. at the back of the esophagus. And right at the bottom of the document, on the name of potential candidates for conversion, who do we find? None other than Theodore. Theodore. He had a horrible accident, maybe even close to death, so they gave him eternal life by turning him into the new villain for I chapter wouldn't want 3. That. In the chapter 3 teaser, we see phrases like, the original saved me, I rejoice in him, which are heavily implied to have been written by Catnap. I mean, we definitely do see Catnap actively worshiping the prototype throughout the entire game. Secret nine. This one is honestly really sad. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Hartman. Come on in. Please have a seat. Just can't trust that voice. That's what I'm saying. How was your ride down? It was uh, nothing like we were expecting. I understand you want to give Jeremy that home. Jeremy. Yes. And we would like to adopt. That's Amazing. So You'll be perfect for not Jeremy? Oh. What? Well, here's there's been what some complications. What do you mean by that? I I don't know. Um They're the testing on Jeremy! Testing. Miss Graper, we deserve a better explanation than that, don't you think? You're in charge of all this! Um, how could you not know? And why are we only finding out about this now? I forgot about how intense this gets. I'm sorry. Ooh. We don't actually know who Mr. and Mrs. Hartman are, but we do, however, know Mrs. Graybear. Okay, so Stella Graybear is one of the six higher up employees who knew about the experiments going on at Playtime Company, which you would think she would seem less shocked when she was talking with those parents. Apparently, according to Wiki, Graybear is German for digger of graves. Lovely. Well, we don't know a ton about Stella, but we do know she was a higher up in the company. And we heard her interview in chapter one, actually. Stella, what made you want to work at the Playtime Co. Factory? Human bodies just can't stay young forever. They're does she want though. to become an experiment? Like it sounds like she does. Like All right, I think we're getting a little off track. That was a really weird interview. It almost sounds to me like Stella wants to be an experiment because they're immortal, right? So we know from chapter two that not only was she hired, but she eventually became the head of Playcare, which that's a really big role. We used to think she was one of the few people who knew about what was going on, but obviously, in chapter three, that tape made it seem like she may not have known. All right, now we are to secret 10, the hour of joy. It's probably one of the scariest ones. It's an emergency alert for the hour of joy, which is the last video Poppy shows us at the end of the chapter. This whole thing is said to be the prototype's fault, and that's why Poppy wants your help in killing him. But who actually is he anyway? Well, the last tape will shine a light on that. So secret 11, who is the prototype? The last secret tape, however, is actually the scariest and it may have 
some hints as to what we'll see in chapter four. By Even the voices are in relation. Experiment one zero zero six. Is the prototype the first the thing made? What's the data tell me? Today's discovery. <laughs> What? That was the discovery? Ready to talk now, are you? I didn't understand what I he said. I possess a question. Ew. Go ahead. Do you feel anything? That voice is all over the place. This question referred to once exactly. Yeah, like emotions. You stick us. Feed us. Tear us flesh. Do you feel it? Is that the prototype talking? There's a secret inside you, 1006. It's a secret. Valuable beyond all measure. Who oh, don't? Science. Who do you fear? Wow. Regardless, I learned something about I feel kind of bad for the prototype. I mean, it's being experimented on in a it excites horrible me. way. Thank you. Thank you. Why are you thanking him? Absolutely. His voice keeps changing. Ooh! Did you notice he's literally copying voices? Which makes sense because I think he's made up of other toys. I mean, we know from Mommy Longlegs that he's made other toys a part of him. Which makes me wonder, did he take Miss Delight? Because I think I heard her voice. And if you come back to the place her body was, this is what happens. She's literally nowhere to be found. People think the prototype took her away. The secret tapes are not the only thing that Poppy's hiding. Apparently, there's an entire secret tunnel that wasn't used. I did try to go in a different area down here. You know, like, it looks like you should be able to play a game or something in here. And you kept having to walk through it. Wait, is this where the tunnel is? I cannot wait to see it. An entrance. <gasps> what? Wow. I am very impressed that this person found this secret tunnel system. I mean, it's still usable. What did the wall say? I'm still watching? Do you think the creators of the game wanted you to find this? <gasps> what? It's just like a creepy underwater ride with toys everywhere. I'm just fascinated. Maybe they didn't like the monster enough to keep it in the ride around, which is kind of sad. Oh, and then I guess you can't go any further. But I have a question, how much of chapter three was real? One of the weirdest things about chapter three is the nightmare sequences. Clearly some of it was not meant to be real, but rather a hallucination due to Catnap's red gas. The chapter doesn't even start with us by the train. We begin in Catnap's hand, remember? What if chapter three was just a dream? And at, during oh, chapter four, we will train. literally begin at the real bottom of the mysterious trash chute. Also, is Huggy dead? Because like, I thought we killed him, but then I kind of saw him come back. We definitely watched him fall quite far in chapter one. We did see a vent in chapter two, however, that seemed to show he may have survived, but Poppy literally clearly said in chapter three that we killed Huggy. We've all seen you, how capable you are. You killed Huggy. What chased us through the hallway then? I actually think that the vent we saw in chapter two is not showing that Huggy escaped. It's showing that the prototype drug his body through the vent there. Who's Poppy? Isn't it weird that the whole series is called Poppy Playtime, but we really don't know much about Poppy, especially after chapter three. I mean, I feel like she's barely in it. We know she was there during the hour of joy and that she herself wasn't a part of it for some reason. Some even say that she's Elliot Ludwig's adopted daughter, but I have a different theory. I actually think she too is an ex-employee of Playtime Co. I think she transferred her consciousness to a poppy doll during the hour of joy, which would explain why she feels the way she does about the prototype and the other creatures themselves. And she really seems to believe that we can take the prototype down, which does give you the question, who are you? Like when I'm playing the game, I have no idea who I really am. They did reveal to us during the game that we used to work in the Playtime company. So there's that. And remember what I said about Poppy? She would have needed someone to put her consciousness into the doll. And if there's one person who could do it, 
it's the doctor. Doctor Harley Sawyer. His nickname, the doctor, may unintentionally reference himself because a doctor wants to keep people healthy and alive by helping them combat issues with their bodies, just like how Sawyer wants to keep Playtime Co. alive by creating the Bigger Bodies initiative to combat the current problems of Playtime Co. So, like, he obviously would know how to do a transfer like this. And we've never heard about his death. And it's assumed that he's the one speaking to the prototype that we heard in the last tape. Have we, as Dr. Sawyer, come back to end the evil experiments once and for all? I don't know, let me know what you think. Do you think I'm Dr. Sawyer? Do you think you're Dr. Sawyer? I don't know. Also, what happens to Kissy? Part of the cliffhanger ending of chapter three was Kissy Missy. As we descend down into the factory with Poppy, we can hear Kissy making some sort of noise like she's being attacked and she's in pain. We were actually able to find a different angle of this scene. So let's see what happens to her. Oh, what's she doing? Look, 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 she's fine. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let's play it. What happens? So the screams are happening, but she's just standing there. <laughs> She's just standing there. It's a fake out, dude. It's fake. She's what I'm thinking is Mob Games actually chose not to animate what happened to Kissy Missy. So it was a secret all to themselves. If you're watching Mob Games, I would like to know what happened to Kissy Missy. But also, what about Dog Day? What happens to him? That was the only chase where we didn't actually see him die. Like, let's take a look about what happens when we leave. See? Nothing. Oh! We're floating through the wall again. I mean, he looks like he's... I was gonna say he looks like he's fine. I mean, he definitely isn't fine, but... He didn't die. He just stops there. So, like, I'm a little disappointed because nothing was shown. But if he was left there by himself, it's more likely that he was eaten, right? And the smiling critters were kind of eating him before we got chased. I think some of the smiling critters might actually be cannibals. I mean, I'm not making this up. Listen to Picky Pig's sign. It tells us. I listened to it myself. Hi there, I'm Picky Piggy. Let's eat. Just wait. Beef, First of all, she's a pig, so that's weird. Found chicken, found the I don't think a pig should eat she chicken. She has a friend that's an elephant. She has a friend that's a unicorn. Doesn't sound good. Hey. She wants to be friends with us to eat us. Hi there. I'm Ooh. Literally all the food choices that were mentioned are smiling critters. Did Piggy Pig eat his brothers? Also, okay, here's a really important question for y'all. Who is Ollie? That's a major question that we're just left with. It's never explained. He helped us throughout the chapter, although he sometimes went MIA and kind of annoyed me. He also seems to know where we are. So is he in a camera room of some sort or like a security room? There could be a darker solution. What if he's the prototype in disguise? I know, wow, drop the mic. I might sound crazy, but he's all seeing. He also could just be a friend of Poppy or a voice that the prototype uses to fool a Poppy. I don't know who to trust anymore. This, this game is making me go crazy. But what is going to happen in chapter four? In chapter three, Poppy said something very important. Let me help you kill him. She wants to Let kill him. Let me help you save everyone. We've all seen you. So she believes in us, and Kissy seems pretty nice. You freed me. We did. You are perfect for, this. for what exactly, Poppy? He's coming. He's the final obstacle the prototype has placed against us. <gasps> Can't stay here. The final one. Final obstacle. Ali will call you. She said catnap is the final obstacle. Judging by what we know about the prototype and catnap shrine. He will likely have all the scariest aspects you could possibly think of anything in Playtime Co. Like literally, it's gonna be like all these different monsters put together and he's gonna sound like your grandma and then your cousin and then Poppy and then Catnap. It's gonna get real scary. Or chapter four could have a completely new villain. And also Poppy could be wrong and the whole process could start all over again. Well, that's all the secrets I found in chapter three, but if I missed something, let me know in the comments.